Okay, in this week's Weather Extra, I want to go back and lend some context to a story that made headlines last week. We covered it on KPIX. It was in just about every other media outlet in the state. And it was a study that says the Sierra Nevada, within the next two to three decades, will likely experience snowless winters on a fairly regular basis. Not that there'd be absolutely no snow, but pretty darn close. So before I get into the details on this and lend a little more context to it, I think it will really help to give us one of the most dramatic show and tells for how varying the snowpack can be in the Sierra Nevada. We're gonna go back to April 1st, 2015. That's the day every year, April 1st, when we do the big snow survey. 2015 was a historic day. And Frank Gerke at the time was the guy who led the snow survey. He'd become famous for doing it every year. He goes up to a plot of land just under uh, Echo Summit on Highway 50 on April 1st to a plot of open field where typically you would have feet of snow on April 1st. That's when the snowpack is supposed to be the deepest. Only on April 1st, it wasn't. And I just want you to see the show and tell Frank did for us on that day. This was the black 1977 measure. The yellow is last year's measurement. Green is the average snow depth at this location. And the very top of this pole is the maximum 150 inches of snow water, of snow depth that we've recorded. Okay, that's pretty dramatic. You can see then Governor Jerry Brown also standing right next to him. So let's say Frank stands about 5'10". The green tape on that pole, he's saying, is the average snow depth in that spot on that date. This is April 1st, 2015. That would have been about, on average, how much snow should have been on the ground. Not only is there not snow up to that level, there isn't any snow. The grass has already grown up into green. 2015 holds the record for the least snowy year on record. Let's go back to the weather computer because before I get into the details on the report and what this report has to say about snowless winters in our future, let's just get a little better acquainted with the Sierra Nevada snowpack. In case you didn't know, every day, high resolution satellites take a picture of us so you can see all of the beautiful details from space. This is us on December 5th, 2021. There's a lot of Thule fog in the Central Valley. That's the snowpack in the Sierra. And we've gotten off to a bad start this year. Right now, that's only about 15% of average for this date. Here's a little more perspective on that. Let's go back one year. This is December 5th, 2020, one year ago. This was also not good. It was better than this year. You can see the snow in the Sierra. That was about 40% of average for this point. Now, the December 5th snowpack doesn't matter all that much. What matters is where are we when we finish the year? And April 1st is the official date for that. April 1st is historically when the snowpack is at its deepest. And from that point on April 1st, that's when it starts melting off really fast. A couple of winters ago, we had a great season in the Sierra. This is April 1st, 2019. It was the last really good season because the last few haven't been good. More on that in a second. But that was about 160% of average. So it's good just to take a look at this. And if you like looking at these kind of things, like any weather geek would, it's a cool image, but it also really helps you gain perspective on how much the snowpack in the Sierra can really vary. That was April 1st, 2019. How about the day Frank was standing in that field? That's April 1st, four years earlier. Now there was no snow at Phillips Station that day. So that was 0%. But the Sierra as a whole did have some snow. It's not like it's going to go completely snowless. But the paper that came out last week doesn't state it's going to go completely snowless. But what it kind of categorizes as a no snow year is if you get 10% or less. Now that can certainly happen. It happened here. We only had 5% in 2015 up and down the range in the Sierra. We have not had many winters like that but we're gonna see the likelihood in a second of how many more of those we might see in our future. Let's gain a little more perspective on this. If we take a look at how we measure snow in the Sierra, we'll break it up between north, central, and south because it's a long mountain range, several hundred miles long. The northern Sierra will experience a very different snow year than the southern Sierra. You see the blue line kind of arcing across the screen here and the months down on the bottom, I apologize if the print is small, but that's every month of the year. April 1st is right there, right at the top of that blue arcing line. That blue arcing line shows you how an average snowfall year would go. I added 2015 on there, can you see it? Barely, because it's so low. 2015 set the record. 
It was the least snowy year on record. But after that, 2017 and 2019 were great years. Those two were like 160% of average. So we're kind of coming away now with this idea of, all right, I get it, the Sierra Nevada really goes through wild swings. There's an average, but usually you'll experience the extremes just as much as you will in average, if not more. The only problem is we're not experiencing the big extremes as often as we're now experiencing the very low extremes. Those are two years from the last 10. Let me show you six years of the last 10, if we just pick out the six years that came in well below average. And each year on there is labeled down at the bottom, but it's too small to read. But in general, six of the last 10 years, that's what it's looked like. They've all come in below average. Let me show you the last two years. Those are the ones that are most recent in our mind. 2019 was good, but on April 1st, 2020, and on April 1st, 2021, they were both bad. Those are the lines right there. They both come in at about 40%, 50% of average, maybe a little more than that, but still well below. This is one large piece of the puzzle for how we've gotten into our drought because the Sierra snowpack is one of the most important aspects in the whole water cycle here in the state of California. So that brings us back to the paper, which just came out in the journal Nature Spotlighting what the future will likely be according to the best science now and the long range models in terms of how often we should expect either a low snowpack or no snowpack. A low snowpack is 30% of average or less. No snowpack is 10% or less. And they put it into a graph which looks a little crazy and psychedelic at first, but there is a story to be pulled out of this image. First off, let's pick out the years. 1950 there, and this goes all the way up past the present, which is right about here. And then of course the graph starts to look very different as we go to the year 2100 right there. Without getting too deep in the weeds on this, the shades of orange and red show you the percent of the Sierra Nevada that's experiencing either a low or no snow year. If we just look at the history from right here where we are, from right about there, 2020 back, there's a good mix. There are plenty of years where you did have low and no snow, but they were mixed in with other years that made up for it. Like we saw, you can get good bursts. But over the last decade, as we saw, six of the last 10 came in close to the low category. And if we look ahead now beyond that, from 2025 here, not only to 2100, but there's a, a yellow line right here. That's 2057, we don't wanna to get too caught up in the exact year. By the late 2050s, the science now tells us with a relatively high degree of confidence that the snowpack in the Sierra as a whole will either be coming in at low or no. 30% for low, 10% for no, and that's of the historical average. So that's what the headline was about from last week and a little more context on it. If we come back to today, as of this first week of December, our snowpack is only at 16% of where it should be for this time of year. Obviously that's not good, but we know the December snowpack is, it's important because we like to see where we are, but really we still have most of December, January, February, and March. Those are the months where we make our living in terms of snow in the Sierra. The story for this year is by nowhere near over. It's the April 1st snowpack that matters most. So fingers crossed, we'll see how it goes for this year. But we should keep in mind the knowledge that we now have, regardless of how this year goes or any individual one year goes, the way the odds are looking, if climate change progresses the way it is, and if there are no significant changes in the amount of greenhouse gases going into our atmosphere, the outcome for many more years to come in with very low snowpack goes way up. And of course, that snowpack accounts for a large percent of the water that then gets distributed throughout the state, whether it's farms or homes. So it's a big story, and one we will certainly be keeping an eye on and updating you on as all the latest science comes out. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in next week with another one.